or test it out. All right, we're going to get started here so we can get the show on the road. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for coming again tonight. I know some of you guys were here last night and gals were here last night, so I um, appreciate everybody coming. Um, just what's going to happen tonight, I'm just going to kind of go over everything that's going to happen, um, some of the changes we're making. Uh, the first one you can see is we're changing the name of Jackson Speedway to Jackson Motorplex. Um, we'll have a brand new website. Um, so there's going to be a lot of changes you know, going on with, with the website. Um, you know, moving forward, we'll have all of our information on there. Um, so you know, I would say within probably a month or so, we'll have uh, you know, jacksonmotorplex.com up and running. So we'll have all of our information on there. But that's the first thing. Um, like I said, every, we're looking at, with the name change, we're, we're not only looking at hosting just racing events, we're looking at using the facility year round. I mean, we're talking about having snowcross events in the winter, um, you know, possibly monster truck events, stuff like that. So it's going to be more than just a speedway. And that's kind of the, the uh, premise of, of the name change is, is moving forward because we want to use it. We're, we're still going to have, we want to have go-kart races, micro races, and uh, you know, all that stuff too. Uh, moving forward, so um, I'm just going to make a couple introductions here. If this will just like watching cable TV. <laughs> <laughs> you work there, Clark? Yeah. <laughs> you worked earlier. You did. <laughs> All right, so again, for those who don't know me, um, my name is Doug Johnson, uh, the general manager of the Jackson Motorplex. Um, I'm just gonna introduce Chuck Zitterich here in the black in the middle. Chuck is gonna be our um, head race director. He will be at uh, the track every Friday night and some of the Saturday nights, but his full-time commitment is with the NSL, so he will be at Knoxville um, on Saturday nights. And then, I think everybody still knows John McCorkle, you haven't forgot about him. Um, John is still going to be involved with us, he's, he's actually going to be a consultant helping us out and I'll kind of let John explain you know, what his role is uh, moving forward and how he's going to you know, help us out. So. Well, um, consultant can mean just about anything and I guess I'm just really excited to still be a part of the Jackson Speedway. Um, you know, I've been working there for the past 20 years, the last... 14 of the last 15 is the promoter and um, now I'm just really excited to, to still be a part of it and I think the consultant portion means we'll figure out my duties as they fit in with everything that Doug is doing and I still plan to be there most every night um, doing whatever needs to be done and uh, happy to uh, maybe just be an employee as uh, I think everybody knows I have a full time job, three little kids and sometimes the time constraints I'm just chasing, chasing uh, Trying to get everything done in a timely manner and um, just happy to have a lot more help and a, and a, and a system in place with a management team that uh, Todd has put together and um, a lot of the stuff we're doing I'm really excited about. I've thought for years and I've expressed this to a lot of people in this room. I've been intrigued by the split format but doing the sprint cars on a Friday night because there's not a lot of competition for that and I think our IMCA classes uh, can stand on their own on Saturdays and just excited to help move forward and uh, take the Jackson Motorplex and now I'm going to have problems maybe calling it the Jackson Speedway for, for a little while anyway but um, just really excited to be a part of it. Alright, and, and the other thing I just want to touch on too, like I said, Chuck is our, our uh, you know overall race director and we're looking at building that team where he has you know somebody that's capable of, of running the show on Saturday night when he's gone so you know over the next few months that's you know part of my job and, and with Chuck's help too we're, we're looking to fill that team and, and make it the best team we can possibly have for the Jackson Motorplex moving forward so um, that'll all happen here I would say within the next couple months but um, first of all like like John just touched on um, for those of you don't, that don't know we're actually going to be racing two nights next year um, in 2016 with the Friday night classes are going to be all sprint cars um, featuring the NSL 410s, 
360s, and the IMTA Race Saver 305 class. So those three classes will be our front, consist of our Friday night program. Um, the one thing that we are changing and moving back for our start time is with the hot laps that's starting at 8 o'clock. The biggest reason there is, well there's two reasons. One, to help save the racetrack, and two, to give people time to, to get off work and still get there in time to, to make the race an event. So, you know, there's been times in the past where, you know, we start at 6, 6.30, and track takes rubber, I mean, it's, it's kind of a waste. So hopefully by moving the start time back, we can help save the racetrack on, on Friday nights and also give people a chance that may have to come from, say, the cities or Sioux Falls, a chance to make it there on time and, and not miss anything. So, um, you know, with uh, talk just a little bit about the format on Friday nights. I mean, the, the sprint cars will, the 410s will still qualify just like they normally do for a typical NSL show. So that's really nothing's going to change there. Um, you know, the, the race savers, they have, the IMCA has their format, so, you know, they'll line up according to that. And then the 360s, um, you know, we're still working on a couple ideas for that. I mean, nothing's set in stone there. So we'll talk about, you know, that a little bit more later. So, and then on Saturday night is going to be our, our stock car classes with uh, IMCA sanctioning with, with the A mods, stock cars, sport mods hobby stocks and sport compacts. So that's going to be pretty much what we've always run on on Saturday nights in the past, just minus the sprint cars. So the stock car guys will actually have their standalone program on Saturday night and um, their hot laps right now we're planning on starting at 7 o'clock. So um, we'll move that back a little bit from where we had it to to, to possibly help save the racetrack there too. So. <clears throat> This is kind of small, but you can kind of just kind of breaks down their schedule, um, and we'll have this on the website here, hopefully um, as soon as that's up and running. But I've just kind of got it broken down by by race dates. Um, you know, on, on the left hand side is all the, the Friday night shows, and on the right hand side is is the Saturday night shows. So you know, typically every Saturday night, um, you know, we're racing the stock cars. Right now, I believe we have uh, 15 Saturday night shows scheduled. And then just to kind of give you a breakdown on uh, Friday nights, because we're not running the 410s, you know, every Friday night. We're not going to conflict with, like, for example, the two-day World Lot Loss Show at Knoxville on June 10th and 11th. You know, we're not racing 410s that Friday night. So, you know, we're looking at, for example, on that Friday night to run just the 360s and 305s. Um, so, you know, how it breaks down, we've got nine 410 shows, 12 360 shows, and 12 305 shows. You know, for example, we also have a World of Outlaw show with the NSL on June 24th. That particular night, we won't run 360s, we'll just run the 305s. So, and then uh, the other um, big event that we have on the schedule later in, in July, we're actually looking at running twin features. It's going to be the Bar Whiskus Memorial, um, and looking at running twin features for the 360s on that night. And that night, we won't run the 305s. So, um, and then also just at the very bottom, um, just this past week, we just uh, brought on Agco as a major sponsor for the Sprint Car Nationals. Um, so that's going to be a three-day event um, in September on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of Labor Day weekend. So, and then uh, we're still looking at a date for the Stock Car Nationals that we're planning on having a two-day event um, in late September, either. The third or fourth weekend of September, we haven't nailed that down. I'm actually talking with IMCA um, next week, um, just so we don't conflict with anything. I know Worthington's having a big uh, stock car race in early October, so we just want to make sure we work with all the other area tracks and don't conflict with, with any race in that. But we'll have that uh, those dates released here real soon as well. So. And I'm going to let Chuck talk a little bit about this is our 410 payout. Um, I'll kind of let him talk a little bit about that and how we're going to be doing the 410 payout uh, for the four, NSL 410 sprint cars. Okay, first I want to thank you guys for coming to the meeting tonight. Some of you guys were here last night. Um, we got some sprint car guys back at the end here. Um, we've, we've talked about it, we've done a few things. Uh, this is what we have come up with. This is the official announcement of our perks for the 410s. This will be in effect at Jackson Speedway at all our 410 shows. 
this is the minimum purse that you'll be racing for. Um, we're going to be booking probably another 10 to 12, maybe 13 shows other than Knoxville and Jackson. Um, we're working on that right now. we got about half of them filled. We'll have the other half filled here shortly. Uh, we'll have an official announcement on our complete schedule by the PRI show. Uh, but the one thing I want to explain about this purse, uh, there have been some people calling and, and a little confusion. This is our minimum purse when you show up to an NSL 410 show. Uh, it does not matter whether you're a member or not. It does not matter if you're 100% uh, attendance or not. Everybody that shows up for 10 show will be running for this purse right here. So you guys got that all cleared up, you know where we're at there. Um, Knoxville, we're still waiting on that to confirm, correct Todd? I think they're going to do the same thing here. Yeah, uh, but we haven't heard officially from you know, Knoxville, or excuse me, Jackson and our other 11 or 12 shows that we have. Uh, we, we want you to join. Our point fund at the end of the year will only go to members. It will only go if you're 100% attendance. Um, so that's not changing. That's saying just the way that is. Um, and we've got flyers up here if you guys want to see what that is. But this is the purse for our NSL 410 shows. A lot of them will pay more than this. Uh, we're working on some bigger paying races. But this is the minimum that you will be racing for. There will not be any toll money this year. That's been added into the purse. If you compare this to last year, a minimum purse, you look on spots second, third, through tenth or eleventh, it's a big increase. It co well more than covers the toll money that you were getting last year. So um, it's about $14,000 more in the A main purse than it was last year. And that's the minimum you'll have that you'll be running for. Um, uh, we don't think we'll be changing any rules in the NSL 410s, tire rules, all that. We're looking to keep that the same. I don't see Knoxville or anybody changing any rules there. Uh, but we'll, like I said, we'll have our schedule out here, uh, official schedule in, in two to three weeks. It'll be ready by PRI show for sure. Uh, we are not going to race any Mondays through Thursdays this year. Next year, excuse me. Uh, all races will be on Friday, Saturdays, and we're going to have some Sunday night shows. Uh, but so you know, we're not doing midweek shows at all this next year. It'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sundays only. And the schedule's coming together very nicely. We've got some new tracks coming on board. Um, like I said, we'll have that announced here uh, in the next couple weeks. We'll have a good schedule wrapped up for you guys on that. Um, you want to go into the other classes or not? Or? You can. Absolutely. Uh, on Friday nights, and again, I'm going to learn a lot about your IMCA guys, but as far as like rules, uh, the purses right now, uh, we got copies of that over here, correct? Yep. Your purse is the same as you ran for last year on Saturday nights. Uh, the rules we control, we do not control the rules. You guys all know that. IMCA does. Uh, I don't know if they made any changes or not or when they come out with that. Uh, the procedures are IMCA procedures, so really we have no control over that. It's all controlled by IMCA. Um, but Friday nights, all sprint car show, we're, gonna, we're bringing on the IMCA Race Saver 305s. Um, we don't have payouts to hand out on that. I don't yeah, know. They're they're okay, yeah. they're over there. Uh, 14 or under cars, we're going to pay 400 to win, 100 to start. We get 15 or more cars, uh, we'll bump it up to 500 to win. And actually, the top nine spots will be bumped up money if we have 15 or more cars. Again, that uh, the procedures for that are governed by IMCA. Um, the uh, point system and everything is governed by IMCA, but we're adding them to the, to the Friday night shows, the majority of our Friday night shows. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. The 360, uh, the minimum purse we'll be running for, and there'll be shows that will pay more. But the, every, every 360 show at Jackson will be an NSL uh, points race. Uh, your points you earn, if you're running the gasket, will go towards the GoMoney.com cash bowl. Um, and like we told the guys last night, uh, it's not required to run that gasket, but if you don't run the gasket, then you're running for the same 1500 to win, 250 to start, but you will not be eligible for the point fund or the cash bowl money at the end of the year. Uh, if you're the first guy with a gasket and you finish sixth in the feature, but you're the first guy with a gasket, you're going to get first place points. The second car will get second place points regardless of where it comes from. Um, and we explained that last night, and a lot of you guys were here last night, so you guys heard all that. But uh, that's the deal on the 360s. Um, and again, we're going to 
We're going to try to get in and out in two and a half to three hours on Friday. We're going to try to save the racetrack. Uh, Friday night, people work. We're going to try a later start and get more people to come. Uh, not stay home if they got to work till five or six o'clock. Uh, we're looking forward to it. We're making a lot of upgrades, changes in the racetrack. We're out there today, Todd and I and Greg and the surveyor guys. Uh, the track is a lot better this year than it has been, and it's going to be a lot better next year. Uh, the, the shape that they're doing and stuff, it's going to be a better racetrack. I think it's going to be a lot better racing next year. Uh, along with all the other improvements, which I know we'll get into later. But, um, other than that, I think that's pretty much it for the sprint cars on Friday. And if you have any questions, you can ask or afterwards come up and ask too, and I'll, I'll try to answer them before I can on the sprint cars. <laughs> and then this just kind of goes over the Saturday night uh, weekly Saturday payouts. <coughs> it's actually staying the same as what it was last year. There's no change whatsoever. Um, you're still going to pay 700 to win the IMCA mods. So this payout is identical to what you guys raced for last year. So there's actually no change in the Saturday night uh, stock car purse. So and that flyer's over on the table too if you guys want to pick that up before you leave. So that this exact payout. I'll, I'll throw in there too, Doug, that you know it's likely for a lot of the memorial races we'll still do a lot of those, the Bruns Memorial, Killen Memorial, um, the Danny Williams Memorial for the sport mods. Um, Redline Racing was good about supplementing some purses with different different fun activities that uh, Ryan Kellen, I'm sure he involved with a lot of the IMCA stuff, still put together some, but last year we did the Hobby Stock Clash, and um, so really every class has got a, a special or two uh, that we'll still be, still be doing going forward. Um, again, here's just some of the special events that we currently have. Like John just said, there's gonna be a lot more coming up, but some that we can confirm right now. Um, you know, May 13th, which will be our first race, is going to be the Pulkin Brothers uh, Spring Sprint Car Nationals that Friday night. Um, again, that will be the 410s, 360s, and the Race Saver 305s. Uh, the World Outlaw Sprint Cars will be here on the 24th of June. Um, the 29th of July, again, is twin 360 features with the Barboises Memorial. Um, and then the Agco Sprint Car Nationals will be September 2nd and 4th. And then, like I said before, we're looking at a two-day show for the IMCA stock cars in, in late September. So um, <coughs> those are what we have confirmed specials as of right now. And like I said, we'll continue to add to that as, as we get you know, deeper into this and get more people involved. So um, the couple things here, um, just want to touch on for everybody racing next year at Jackson Motorplex, transponders will be mandatory. Um, we're going to go to the electronic timing score, scoring with mylaps.com. Um, the next slide, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that and, and how you can get a hold of those. But um, every car, you know, will be required to have uh, the transponders next year in 2016. So, one thing that we talked about, and I know what they're doing with the NSL, um, we're also what they're doing with Jackson Motorplex is having a online weekly racing show. You know, maybe a 10 to 15 minute just recap. Of, of the uh, that week's racing program um, so people can see that online um, and then we've also talked for the stock cars um, you know like I said we didn't increase the purse at all we're possibly looking at a, a loyalty program say for example if you were on a certain percentage of, of all the the 15 races that we have scheduled um, there's a possibility of having uh, some sort of loyalty program to next year so we'll we'll announce that at a later date as well <coughs> Here's the information about, it's kind of cut off there on the screen, um, with the MyLabs. Actually, the, we, Chuck and I have done some research here on this in the last day or two, and um, a lot of guys that have run the, the transponders in the past, you, you're used to using this red um, transponder down here in the, in the corner. MyLabs is actually replacing that with this um, X2 transponder um, that's going to take the place of all the red ones that have been out there. There's also been some yellow ones. I know guys, they're not compatible with a lot of tracks. Some guys have used those in the past. So, um, you know, we're actually going to be talking to these guys at the PRI show as well. But um, Chuck had made a phone call and talked to them today. How it works is they have a subscription. So for one year, you can actually get the transponder for 160 bucks. You get the transponder, the bracket, and that little silver device is actually the charging 
um, <coughs> system that comes with a USB cord that you can plug in just like a cell phone. So that, that hooks up to the transponder and you can charge it um, that way. So for 160 bucks, you get all that and you get one year subscription. So at the end of that year, um, that transponder will not work anymore. So you would have to re, um, you know, re, you know, get a another subscription. You can do a two year for 235 or a five year for 410. And you can actually go right onto mylapse.com um, and order these yourselves. I mean, it's, we found it's probably the cheapest and most economical way to do that right now. Um, so, you know, there's really no benefit. You know, he's got some pricing and, and uh, there's really no benefit in, in ordering in bulk. So that's the best way that we found. If something else comes available that we get more information that's better, we'll let you guys know. But um, that's kind of what we found talking to them today and, and um, going that route. So that comes with the bracket. Um, like I said, with the charging system, so um, that's really all you need right there. <clears throat> and you keep the transponder. Yep, if that's you race for one year and decide you're done racing, you keep the transponder. It won't work anymore until somebody pays a subscription to get that yeah. serial number plugged into their system. So if you know you're maybe only going to race for a year or two, I mean, that way you have the option. You don't have to buy a $500 transponder. You can do, you know, a one or two year subscription if somebody's only going to race for a year or two and retire, for example, which we don't want to see, but it's going to happen. So, you know, you have that option. So, a couple other things I just want to mention here. Um, we don't have them quite ready yet. We'll have them ready for the banquet is the driver information sheets. We'll have those on our website too. I want everybody, if we'll have them there uh, next Friday night at the banquet, but I'd like everybody that's racing at Jackson Motorplex to fill that out because we want to... We want to build our, our drivers on our website and promote you guys on our website. And you know we're looking for photos to use for that along with the weekly program. Um, our intention is to have a very nice four color weekly program um, with driver uh, profiles throughout, you know, for all the classes. Um, so, I mean, that's gonna be very important that we get these information sheets back in a timely manner so we can build a program around that and um, use on the website as well, so. And then this is actually the, the layout um, of the whole complex that we're looking at. Um, Penn Engineering Firm designed this, so I just want to talk a little bit about kind of what we're looking at doing here. Um, as you can see, inside the half mile, we're actually looking at building uh, a three-eighths mile track, which would be very, if anybody's familiar with <coughs> Italy, Missouri or River City Speedway in Grand Forks, it's about the same size as that. Um, I've got some dimensions here to kind of show you on the, on the next slide, but this kind of lays everything out. Um, you know, we're also, if you don't know, we're moving the pit area off of turn one and two. Is actually going to be to the east there with a set of bleachers, um, you know, for, the, for everybody in the infield to watch. And we're going to have like a safer barrier um, actually right here in front of these bleachers. You know, to protect that, there will be a fence along here to... Uh, for the pit area. And then also, as you can see right here, we're actually going to have a, a catwalk, so to speak, connecting uh, the turn one or the pit bleachers with the main grandstands or main bleachers. So that way, as the cars come off the track, you know, you, there's no fans in the way. You, you, you'll have to walk above on the catwalk, and that way we can keep traffic moving. and. You know, don't get anybody hit or run over that way too. So people can go back and forth between the <coughs> pit area and the main bleachers if they wish. And uh, you know, that way we can keep traffic moving. The other thing too, I was just gonna mention, um, you know, as far as traffic flow coming in, you know, we're gonna move the, the pit gate, um, as you can see right back here, which is gonna be a little bit further to the west of where it currently is. Um, all the haulers and everything will still come in the way you boys come in, um, but the nice thing about it, when you leave, there will actually be an exit right off here to go out this county road. Um, that way you don't have to fight traffic after the races. So everything will kind of flow in one direction, same direction as the racetrack, and, and hopefully it'll make for smoother, you know, exiting the track as the night's over so you don't get so congested behind the grandstands. So um, just to kind of give you an idea that that, Layout of the smaller track, um, you know, is roughly 500 from 
I'll back up here just a little bit. You can, so from the, the top of turn one and two to the top of turn three and four is actually 564 feet long. You know, if you compare it to Worthington, um, Cusett's uh, Park, Raceway Park in Jefferson, um, you know, River Cities in, in Grand Forks, there's the current dimensions from what uh, we just measured on Google Earth using those dimensions. So, you know, like I said, it's, it's a little bit longer than, than River Cities. Um, you know, it's actually a little bit shorter than Houston's to kind of give you an idea of where it fits in there. So, um, but you know, that's something that's definitely gonna happen. Is it gonna be ready in May? Probably not, or I'd say more than likely not, but it's, it's something that we intend to maintain both racetracks moving forward. Um, you know, we'd like to possibly race the sprint cars on the short track and, and maybe the stock cars on, on the half mile. Um, you know, we've talked with the micro guys, you know, they've been looking for a racetrack and, you know, we feel this, this, these dimensions will give them a, a fairly racy racetrack for the micros. So, um, you know, they've raced at pretty much most of those tracks that we have listed up there. So, um, you know, it's, it's not any bigger than, it's actually smaller than Houston's. Um, you know for the micro guys so so that way we can accommodate everybody and and hopefully put on a good show the one thing too just to to mention that this racetrack will actually be um sunk down so it won't block anybody's view from sitting in the grandstand so actually from my understanding the the banking will actually be even with the what the guardrail is right now so that track will actually be lower than than the current track that's there so there would be no obstruction of view you know, for people sitting in the grandstand, so. That's pretty much all I got. If anybody has any questions, we're open for any questions. Fire away. He's blind the beer. Doug Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else, any other tracks around going to go with that transponder, or what's the deal? A lot of tracks, so I know most tracks, I would say, in the country are eventually going to that. The thing is that it's going to eliminate human error. Right. The biggest thing, you know, I mean, we've all had that happen before, whether if you've raced for any period of time, you, you've, you've had issues with, with scoring. This is going to eliminate that. You know, you don't have, you can go back and get a printout. I mean, Chuck can testify to that last year with some NSL shows where somebody had a question and put what position they were in. You can go back and print out lap by lap by lap and, and he can show you exactly where you were. So that's the biggest thing. Um, you know, I talked to Justin with Redwood and Worthington. Yeah. They do have loops there. Um, I don't know if they're gonna go to transponders next year, but they do have the loops. So, you know, it's gonna be a matter of time before I think every track does. You know, if you go to Hartford, Houston's, they're all they're all using them. They've been using them for the last couple of years. So, kind of like the race thing years ago, and you know, all of that, and all of just. You know, yeah, that's what I said. We run, you know, Fairmont. Is Fairmont going to do it? You know, as though the, your weekly track that you run. He's the Dallas Stones interested in. So yeah, they. Everybody's kind of looking at it. You know, yeah. If they go with it, then it ain't a bad deal. You know? Yeah. They, even Rock Rapids is talking about, they've, they've got the scoring system, they've got the loop barrier and everything, it's just not mandatory yet, but they have all the equipment too. So those of you that run Rock Rapids or CRA, the USRA stuff there, they're, they're gonna do it too eventually here, so. And no, you can buy that without a subscription too, I think, right? Yeah, but I think that way, if you do it from what we looked at, is like, what, 400 or 500 it's, dollars? It's close to 400 hours to buy. But then, then you only got no subscription. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's yours, it works as long as you've got it. Yeah. In our current ones, like I've had mine forever, they'll still work. Mm -hmm. yep. oh. mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, if you already own them, I mean, those, mm -hmm. those, the red ones, they should still work yeah, just right. fine. So they've just gone to a new one. I think this just came up with us this year recently. Yeah. They've upgraded to that X2. So. Anything else? Questions, concerns? Is that through the military track to be looking at? Possibly. I would say right now the go kart track is probably not going to. It's probably going to stay where it is for the current year. <clears throat> um, with everything we got going on, I would say that's pretty safe to say. We have permission to move it there. 
Yeah. But it'll probably stay there. Yeah. Where it's at right now. Yeah, but you said Especially it. we're gonna focus on trying to get that inside track completed because it's gonna be good for all forms of racing, micro to spring bands to be honest. Everything. So Yeah. We will have a go-kart track because like I said last night, I, I still feel you know, that's where our our next generation generation of racers are going to come from. They're just not going to fall out of the sky and hop in a sprint car. So we've got to start them young and, and get them involved in go-karts or micros or something. Um, so we have a next generation of racers down the road. So we will have a go-kart track in some way, shape, or form. <coughs> yes, so sir? if you get the inside track done, is that going to be like the four tens are going to run that primarily or that's going to be an occasional deal or don't know yet? I'd say don't know yet. <laughs> the big track right now is what, 85 feet wide? How wide is the smaller track, the inner track, going to be? As far as the width of the straightaways and turns? Yeah. I'm not sure how wide it's going to We haven't even really gotten that far yet. INS is laying all that out based on what Doug said with some of the other tracks. We're trying to fit it in the middle. We're going to have to move four light poles to do it. So we're just like, that's why it won't be ready like May. It's going to be sprint car worthy though. I mean, well, I, I, I watched a bunch of videos today and they're pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> um, Grand Forks is fun. Grand Forks. <clears throat> that's kind of the Peavely Grand Forks. You know, I mean, it, it, that's good for micro stock cars, sprint cars. <coughs> I'm just, we'll just see what happens. Well, Instead I've of tearing off the lane track, track yeah. we're going to yeah. keep them both going. I just see what people like about it. Yeah. That's what we're calling it a motorplex. You can come and watch anything. Mm -hmm. So you said the uh, small track is going to be sunk down. Yes. Uh, what's the visibility going to be from the grandstands? Very good, because if you go there right now, the first beam on the A part of the grandstands is up. We're starting 11 feet up in the air for your the handicap accessible. So if you go there right now and you look at it, you're going to be looking down into the small track and the big track. So I mean, it's going to work. It's going to be. So the new grandstand is going to be a lot higher. Off the the new grandstand start will be about row 13 at the old grandstand mm -hmm. when we start. So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> then you're not going to have a wall all the way around the big track now? Or are you? Not one and two. There won't be, there'll, there'll actually be a like a safer barrier, I would say, in where the bleachers are. The um, bleachers in one and two, you see going north and south, will start 12 to 15 feet up in the air with a safer barrier. So there'll be a room to, what do I say, tunnel or whatever. <laughs> um, if we have to put a wall around there and we keep the big track the way it's going, we'll put a wall around there. But it'll be a stub wall where you flip up and over, you know, and land out there. But, Right now, I mean, the, the small track, our intention is to make it very racer friendly where you're not, there's not a lot of obstruction, but you would go off into the big track or obviously we'll go into the retention pond, but it's going to be forgiving, kind of like maybe a Rock Rapids or something like on the, on the one, so yeah, one and two in Rock Rapids. Mm -hmm. So it's forgiving, you'd, you'd go on to the bigger track. There will be, I'm assuming right here will be the staging area so we can keep the flow moving. Um, you know, that will be, there will be a guardrail there, um, you know, protecting the staging area, you know, off of turn two there, so. Our big key is the flow, keep everything going. So we can get shows moved through and fans happy drivers happy and and the split classes you know I mean I think it's going to be great this year with running our, our fender cars on Saturday night because it gives you guys the track you want sprint cars can have the track they want you know that's always the question <coughs> trying to balance that out as a sprint car track or a stock car track so we're really going to 
Cater and John mentioned that specials, and we're really going to try to build the stock car program, the fender program at Jackson Speedway too on Saturday nights, and have that a premier Saturday night program. So it's not all just about the sprint cars; it's about building the whole program. The other thing I was going to mention too, I know we had an employee meeting here last week, but if you guys know, we're we're always looking for, for good help, especially with running two nights. I mean, not everybody can commit to two nights, so if, if you know of anybody that may be interested in coming to a workforce or help us out, you know, get a hold of me or let me know. <laughs> You're too old. <laughs> all right, that's all I got. You guys are more than welcome to stick around and visit or ask us questions off to the side if you want, but uh, thanks again for coming, and like I said, you know, look for the website, we'll have that up and running here shortly, and have a lot of updates on there, so thanks again. Banquet neutral Friday, hope y'all can join us on the Friday, and a lot of fun, and a lot of things to do around, we'll give away, 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 no, it's actually one of the